Hello there, I'm the student and today I'm going to show you a little Christmas extra video in which I'm going to show you that you are all playing Aragon completely wrong. Now of course I'm aware of the fact that uh, in the entire game you can obviously play the game uh, whatever way you want to play the game, that's for sure. But uh, just in terms of efficiency, what I'm showing you right now this is the most efficient way to use everything of Aragon in the perfect scenario to get the most out of every event, every mission that Aragon has. And I can guarantee you this is a way uh, that you would have never played Aragon before. You can see that it is 1451 and I have already the Iberian Wedding. Now. I have a regency, Maria de Trastamara, which is actually the consort of my starting ruler, which is of course Alfonso. Now Alfonso is a general way before the start of the game. I think uh, like uh, in the 1430s or something, it was uh, he was uh, like basically set as a general. You can see where the generals were hired, right? And if you do that on uh, Alfonso, you can see that he was actually hired before 1444 even, right? And he is also quite old. He is like a few years older than Maria is. So he will die within the first six years, like in 95% of the cases, okay? Now, normally, then the ruler Jean II de Trasamara would get on the throne, as you can see, which is the same ruler of Navarra over here except if you disinherit that heir. And that is exactly what I did. You can see I still have quite low prestige because of that. I disinherited him on day one. And then I obviously did like uh, royal marriages with uh, most, uh, with a lot of people, you know, which increased my chance of getting an heir, um, as well as, of course, as soon as Alphonse is 50 years old, there are obviously also events on, like, a newborn daughter and so on. Those events that give you heirs are then also viable to, uh, to trigger. Which means that after you disinherit them, until Alfonso dies, with uh, which you obviously can prolong a little bit by not uh, taking him as a general in your army, you will get an heir, like in 90% of the cases, okay? And what happens is exactly this, because I got an, I've got an heir, you can see, like four years ago, um, but he was, of course, zero years old. And that means that after Alfonso died, I had now that regency that you can see right here. And for those of you who are not aware of this uh, event, how this event can be triggered, it basically says that both of you have to be like a monarchy with one of each other having a female ruler or a regency and the other one having a male regent. Now there is a little trick, you know, if you start as Aragon, it is for Castile, if you start a play as Castile, then it's for Aragon. Um, but it basically says that if the counterpart so in my case, Castile, that you are not playing, if that nation has no regency, so basically if it has a normal ruler, as it has in this case, as you can see, Enrique IV, then the chances of this event are actually 10 times higher, which means that this event, which has normally a mean time of happening of 10 years, now has a mean time of happening of one year. And you, uh, I just told you that you can fully script to get this regency like on a 90% chance. And then when you hit 1450, the event uh, can start triggering. It only takes you on average one year, actually pretty exactly uh, on this in this case as well as you can see. On average, it takes you only one year to trigger this extremely strong event. And that is exactly what I uh, what I did right now, and that is exactly what I'm going to use right now to, of course, take Castile as a junior partner in 1451. There we go, personal union. 
Now that of course completes this first mission, intervene in Castile, which gives me uh, Castile as a historical friend, which is nice, but also a restoration of the Union CB on Portugal. Now while I'm waiting for England to end the war with uh, France so that I can also fight England because I want to take some lands from them, I actually declared another war and this might seem to be a pretty weird war for you guys, right? Now this is Aragon fighting Catalonia, okay? So which has basically almost the same flag. But normally, of course, all of Catalonia is owned by Aragon in 1444. What I did is, I just returned that province over here, that uh, Urgil province, to Catalonia. And the reason for that, why I did that is, because this literally prevents the event from firing that lets you become a peasant's republic if you want to. Now, of course, if you are a peasant's republic, you can't trigger the Iberian wedding. That is why I need to prolong that event. That event has a mean time of happening for of uh, 60 months. So it is very likely that it triggers before the Iberian wedding triggers. So that is why I had to actually prolong it until I fired the event Iberian wedding which I of course already had, as you saw, which means that now I can actually take that province back. Now that I had taken the province back and uh, I can of course uh, core it, it costs quite a lot, but I think that's a price uh, that you should be willing to pay uh, because not only am I allowed to get the Iberian wedding uh, this way, but I'm also allowed to, as I, I already shown you that, to get the restoration of the Union CB on Portugal, which you only get if you are a Christian monarchy. I've got the CB already, which means is right now I could trigger that event uh, anytime. Uh, as I said, it has a mean time of happening of uh, 60 months. So like in uh, four to five years, it will trigger. And then I can become a peasant's republic while having Castile and Portugal as a personal union. Okay, I was actually uh, quite lucky. It triggered already only uh, two years uh, further or three years uh, further than uh, I shown you the uh, annexation of Catalonia. As you're going to see in a second, there is another very interesting thing that you have to keep in mind to play way more efficient with this event. Now you can see you could of course uh, like accept the demands, you know, and um, have like a privilege given out or something or fight them or you could just become a peasant's republic. Now of course you can see that you will have to fight a lot of rebels. This is of course bad. I can't, cannot say anything else. This is bad. But you can also see that I am not losing three stability. Normally, if you choose that event, you would lose three stability, which is an insane amount of admin mana, right? You can see instead of that, I am right now only losing 50 mana of each category, which is in total way less and it is way more spread out, right? That you don't get to be behind in only one category, right? And not only that, I am even getting a stability hit, as you can see down at the bottom of the event. And that is because I have just never stepped up since the death of Alfonso. Now, of course, Alfonso will die eventually, like in every game, right? He's, as I said, he's pretty old. So you are going to get that stability hit. Not only am I saving the mana to step up, which are of course insane if you are in the Regency for example. Not only that, but I am getting even positive things from that minus stability, such as a free stability from this event, as well as avoiding the three stability hits from the event. So essentially, if you calculate the 150 uh, mana that I uh, would have spent otherwise if I would normally step up, um, 
together with the 150 that you lose over here, this event com in combination with just not stabbing up is just better. Okay, it is just better in every category. And then you can also see the big advantage why in my opinion this is by far the best option of this event is that you get a scripted 564 leader of 20 years of age, so not old actually, which is a scripted careful trade for minus 10% AE impact as well as a scripted protector of the little folk trade which is a trade that is only gained through this event so uh, yeah let me just uh, for now click that event real quick of course uh, a lot of rebels as i said but now if you have a look on what this trade does is this trade gives you national unrest minus one and morale damage plus 10 percent so this ruler is probably the best ruler that you can get in 1455 that is scripted, okay? Now you probably saw that a second ago that Castile literally just overtook the same ruler, okay? So that not only means that they have the same mana generation, but also their troops are getting the same morale damage modifier that I did as well as I can keep those personal unions even though I am a republic. And you probably know that from being like a Dutch republic or something, because the Dutch republic also gets a PUCB on England, they can still have a PUCB even as a republic. And I can also, of course, still use that PUCB. As you can see, I can still take the union with Portugal. Which means that this strategy that I just showed you literally combines everything good that Aragon has together, which is taking and keeping the personal unions of Naples, Castile and Portugal, therefore completing your missions over here the way that they are intended to work and that they are uh, of course the fastest because you can't annex Portugal in one war uh, without the restoration of the Union CB, right? Not even talking about uh, what you would have to do to Castile to get that, which you literally got totally for free. But on top of that you also get the positive things of the government type with getting this insane ruler of Aragon, scripted ruler I have to say, as well as one of the strongest government types in the early game that you can ever get. You see this Peasants Republic literally gives you another 5% morale and production efficiency. And of course you are a Republic, which means that you can re-elect rulers while having 100 Republican tradition from the start of the game. And uh, most of you probably know that uh, in the early game, until 1600, republics are by far the strongest government type in the entire game. Okay, Which means that this Aragon, at this stage of the game, with Castile, Naples and Portugal as a personal union, is the strongest way that you could possibly play Aragon in any sense, in terms of mana generation, in terms of military strength, in terms of AE efficiency, of course, with the careful ruler trade, but also the Iberian wedding, so not having to conquer Castile, as well as time efficiency with the ability to full annex Portugal as a union, of course, in one war, and all of that literally not even 10 years into the game. And now comes the best part. If you wait just one day, let one day, just one day pass, then you can see that you will get the event election, which means that with 100 Republican tradition, of course, you are going to keep Eric as a Grand Consul, which will give them 
plus one stats in every category, which is wasted in Diplo. So he will be a 6-6-5 leader instead of a 5-6-4. As well as you can see, I'm going to get a random 50 mana points back. You remember that in the event I lost literally only 50 mana in each category and I'm getting one of that already back one day later. Uh, as well as of course increasing my mana generation to the sky. Okay, it's just not yet done with this video because there's just one more thing that I have to show you. Because after like a few years, as you can see uh, longer into the game, I was now able to uh, get the third government reform and I took of course sortition. And this means that my rulers literally rule until they die. And uh, not only that, but it also gives average monarch lifespan plus 25%, which means that my monarchs or my rulers in this case will live 25% longer on average. And as the time went by, of course, without me having that uh, enacted yet, I could, of course, re-elect my ruler two times, which means that I have now a 666 careful protector of the little folk grand consul that is 34 years old and lives on average probably like until he is 60 and you cannot tell me that there is any other nation that has a better scripted ruler without any rng than aragon with this tactic so i hope you enjoyed this little uh, christmas special video uh, that i did for you and uh, maybe you're going to play aragon another time with this special tactic that i just showed to you and uh, i hope you enjoyed the video as always and we are going to see in the next one